Hi, this is Simon from HomeKit News, and this week we're looking at a product range that has actually been out for a while, but something I've not been able to get hold of until recently, namely the Acara US Rocker Switch. Was it worth the wait? Keep watching to find out. So I'll start off with an overview of the product, but before I do, I want to send a massive thanks to Philip and Michelle at Acara for sending me these switches, but also especially Eric at Modern Day Tech, who previously sent a switch to me all the way from the US at his own cost. So thanks a lot, Eric. Uh, now please do check out his YouTube channel, Modern Day Tech. You won't be disappointed. Right, back to the switches. So here I've got one each of the single switch and the double switch, and in case you're not aware, neither of these switches can be used in a three-way switch configuration. However, Akara offer both neutral and no neutral versions, which is great news. As these use Zigbee, you will need an Akara hub to use these, like all of their other child devices. So aside from being officially Zigbee certified, the packaging gives you a taste of what you can do with these, including remote control, i.e. via your phone, even if you're not at home, you get voice control of course using Siri, Amazon or the Google Assistant and you can also program the switch to turn on and off via schedules. Looking on the other side of the box and you can see logos for both Amazon and Google but don't be alarmed if you don't see the HomeKit logo as it's the Acara hub that's the point of contact for HomeKit not the switch. Anyway other features listed on the box include smart automations that you can create via HomeKit of course or the Acara app in this case there's no neutral wire required which is great and finally the switches have a built-in overheat protection. Okay let's finally have a look at the switches themselves and upon opening the box you can see we get an instruction manual in English and in Spanish and the manual is quite detailed but if you're not comfortable with this kind of job do use a professional electrician. There's also a Zigbee QR code but I'm not sure what that is for to be honest. The other piece of paper in the box is a set of stickers for you to label your wires which is especially useful if you ever need to replace the switch at some point in the future. Next to the switch itself and here are some specs for you to pour over if needed so feel free to pause the video if necessary. Now these switches come with a faceplate but the faceplate actually comes in two parts. It's designed this way so as to hide the wall screws you might typically see on more basic wall plates. Now the inner plate screws into the wall whilst the outer plate clips onto the inner plate. This gives the switch a very clean look which I really like. The good news is that the size for these face plates is pretty much standard so you can change them for something that you might prefer. So this is a single switch without neutral so only three wires. Now it can look daunting if you've never fitted a switch before but it isn't that hard to be honest. If we take a closer look you can see the load wire and a live wire but of course no neutral. And if we look at the top you have the earth or ground wire which is removable if you already have a ground wire in place. That's about it for the contents of the package except for three wire nuts that are included to connect your current wires with the wires on the switch along with some screws to fit the switch to the box and the face plates. So let's move on to the basic installation. Now because I'm not an expert with wiring, I'm not going to show you how to connect this switch up. And to be honest, in Taiwan things are slightly different, they don't even use an earth or ground wire. So from this point, the wires have already been connected with just the face plate being fitted in this case. You'll notice that the blue light is on, as I've already added the switch to the Akar app and it's all working. But of course, when installing the switch, you must always ensure power is cut so as to avoid the possibility of electrocution. Now, in this case, you can see how the inner face plate connects to the switch with the outer face plate clicking into place. And it's all working and good to go. Let's first look at how the switch shows up in HomeKit and the Home app. Now, one of the switches is fitted in one of our bathrooms and we can toggle the light on and off by pressing the tile. But if we long press on the tile, you can also get a larger toggle switch as shown here. Now if you scroll down you get access to adding scenes or checking various other details. It's all fairly standard stuff so far. From here you can also see that it's connected to the Acara app and also reveals the hub that the switch is connected to, in this case an Acara hub in the corridor. So if we now open the Acara app we'll see some of the extra functions you can get there. As with the home app there's a tile for the switch and if we long press on it we get a few simple options 
one of which is to set an alert that notifies you when the light switch state has changed. You can access more settings via the accessories tab and if we press on the switch in the list you'll see a large toggle switch as well as an option to create and activate a countdown timer. We can access yet more options via the more settings button which includes a power off memory option as well as the ability to convert the switch to a wireless button. Now this essentially disconnects the switch from the mains and then allows it to control other devices although this last option doesn't seem to be working as expected right now. You also get access to detailed logs to show when the light was switched on or off, going back in my case at least three months. The final extra that you get is a visual representation of the strength of the switch's Zigbee signal to the hub that it's connected to. And as you can see here, the signal strength is good for 98.5% of the time, which is no surprise given it's only seven feet away from the hub. With that all covered, let's finally move on to my thoughts and the pros and cons of these switches in general. So it's all pros except for one last point. So starting with Zigbee, I'm a big fan and with lightning fast reaction times, this makes remotely controlling these switches a pleasant experience. The buttons are really light to the touch, which for my elderly mother-in-law is quite important. And the fact that Takara offers both switches without requiring a neutral wire is perfect for my needs and many others I suspect. And this is only topped off by what I consider a really classy but minimalist design that can fit perfectly pretty much anywhere, except for maybe a gothic mansion perhaps. Now the additional functionality via the Akara app adds some nice extras, although the wireless switch function doesn't seem to work as I would have hoped. Maybe that can be addressed at some point later. Other than that one minus point, these are really my go-to switches now and I'm really happy with them. But as always, if you want a more in-depth review, do head over to HomeKit News via the link below to get more details should this be of interest to you. Thanks for visiting and see you again soon.